everyone, and welcome to Pops and Hisses, a music podcast where we talk to bands you love, talk about concerts, and answer your burning music questions. I'm your host, Kevin Coffey, and in this episode, we have an installment of Ask the Music Guy, and we're talking about local promoters versus big promoters, and if I got to pick one artist to have a beer with, who would it be? So these are all listener-submitted questions, and if you'd like to ask your own question, head to popsandhisses.com slash question and fill out the form. It's really easy, it just takes a second, and you could be featured on a future episode of the show. So we're going to get to your questions soon, but first I wanted to mention a few things. Keep looking at popsandhisses.com for concert reviews and other information. So concerts are heating up again. Uh, check out our website popsandhisses.com for a rundown on big concerts that are coming and we also talked about that on a previous episode of the podcast but we are going to be seeing more shows which is so exciting so we have reviews coming up from tool billy eilish and lots more so keep an eye out for those on the website i always take lots of photos do reviews recaps so no matter where you are those bands are coming to your town it's always great to check those out before and uh kind of get an idea of what's coming so for fans of the podcast in Omaha and Lincoln as well, I also wanted to tell you to check out the site, popsandhisses.com, for my list of the best concerts coming to town from now until September. So right now there's 52 concerts on the list, and we'll keep adding to that list as they're announced. A lot of things are coming on the way this summer, not everything is announced yet, and we will keep adding to that, so keep that one bookmarked and keep coming back to it. So for the whole review of those shows for some lists and some exciting stuff, obviously more podcast episodes, go ahead and head to popsandhisses.com. So we're back with another edition of Ask the Music Guy, and on this episode we have two questions. The first question comes from Adam Struer on Twitter. So he said, how disappointing is it that Live Nation is booking for a new venue in Omaha instead of a local promoter? Because we've seen local festivals be booked masterfully and grow year over year. So what's the next step local promoters can take to lead, collaborate, and grow Omaha as a greater homegrown music destination? That's a great question from Adam. And actually, it's a little more than one question. He's kind of touches on a few different topics there. So one of the things he's talking about is obviously specifically in Omaha, where I'm from, but uh, I'm going to talk about them broadly as well. So if I'm hearing him right, uh, he's kind of talking about a few different things. One is about promoters uh, and venues, and the other one's kind of about a homegrown music scene, and those are kind of related, but a little bit different. So I'm going to kind of tackle these one at a time. Uh, Omaha is probably like a lot of other cities. So we have big venues, small venues, medium venues, theaters, GA places, clubs, uh, you know, all kinds of different things. Um, We also have promoters, large and small. So we've got tons of shows booked by Live Nation and AEG and those big promoters. And we also have a large local promoter. We have uh, promoters that, concert promoters that book at medium, small to medium sized venues all over the country and also book them here. So we've kind of got everything. Uh, Is it disappointing when a large promoter comes in and just kind of takes over a venue? Yeah, totally. I'd say so. Generally speaking, those large promoters don't have the pulse on what's happening in your town. They generally book a lot uh, big tours primarily. I mean, they're trying to maximize their dollar. And so Live Nation, for example, biggest promoter in the country, uh, you know, they book international tours for the biggest artists in the world. They do smaller shows, but rarely do they do anything smaller than a thousand people or so you know that's even so that's well-known talent that they're booking on a national tour and they're going to book in your home in your town too so uh, a lot of times that happens too live nation doesn't usually have people to run shows in your town so they'll fly somebody in just for the day just to do your show Uh, they even will hire local freelancers to run shows so the people who work for your local promoter on a night off might go run a live nation show Uh, But that said, like, generally speaking, the people who are coming in from a big promoter like that don't live in your town. They don't know the needs or interests of your city and the local fans the way that your local promoter does. Um, Those local promoters own the venue in your town or operate the venue. They book tons of shows. They know what people like. The last time this band came to town, they did this many tickets and they're really excited to bring them again. You know, they keep their finger on the pulse of that stuff. Um, you know, those local promoters, are the ones that fill your clubs and small venues, they know what people like, they know it's exciting. So when local venues have exclusive contracts 
with those large promoters, it's totally disappointing. It's a huge bummer to me. It's a big letdown for a couple of reasons. One, I don't think you're going to get the sort of stuff maybe you'd want. You're going to get what people in New York or LA think you want. Um, and when you're not on the coast and you're in a different place, that might not be quite what you're excited about. Um, also, it's kind of a bummer that it then those exclusive contracts with uh, large national promoters take that venue off the table for local promoters. They might have a show that would be sweet that would go in there and it's just not going to happen because they're not part of the exclusive contract. So that kind of shuts people out and that's just kind of a bummer. Um, kind of an Adam's question as well is something about what, you know, what can local promoters do to be more viable? I mean, book more good stuff, book lots of stuff, uh, take control of more venues, get your shows into as many venues as you can. Uh, thankfully here in Omaha that that happens. Um, promoters themselves actually own most of the small to medium venues around here. They, they get to put in their places what they want and what they know will do well. They control their own destiny in a good way. Um, and also it means that shows booked here are things that people like. So we're good on that. It's advantageous. It's wonderful. If you're a music fan to live in a place like this, where you have access to so many great shows. Uh, the last part of Adam's question is a little bit different. It's kind of related, but he said, uh, just a reminder, he said, how do you grow a city as a homegrown music destination? So, you know, when we're talking about that and like local bands and local music scene, Local promoters have a big part in that um, because, you know, if they're controlling the shows and the venues and things like that, that's really good. And they can help promote those local bands and stuff. But, you know, a lot of that comes on us, us as people, <laughs> those of us that are going to join bands and create bands and play in bands. And those of us also who are going to go to shows. So how can we all do better? Encourage people to go to your shows. If you are a popular band, get other bands that you like on your bill. Um, you know, it's always good to maybe get a opening spot for a touring band. That's good. But if you're going to play a, a, a show, a headlining show as a local group, get your friends on there, get bands that other people would like go outside your genre, try different things. That also means for those of us who are fans, go to those shows, go to local shows there. It's great music. It's awesome. You'll have a good time. You're also supporting. I mean, you talk about supporting a small business. You're supporting a local band, <laughs> you know, buy a ticket. It's usually like 10 bucks for a night of entertainment, buy a t-shirt, buy their record, you know, talk to them. It's also cool if they do make it big or do big things because, Hey, you've now seen this, these guys before they were big. So it's kind of that sort of thing is on, uh, I think promoters have a part in that, but it's on a lot of us. If that makes sense. Real quick, I want to talk about this very podcast, Pops and Hisses, and our website, popsandhisses.com. So the podcast is coming out weekly. We've been off for a couple weeks, but we are back at it. Uh, keep an eye on your favorite podcast service and follow me on Twitter at Omaha Music Guy for updates in case we take a week off or we've got a bonus episode or something like that. Also, just keep checking back to the website. Find everything at popsandhisses.com. And please subscribe to the Pops and Hisses podcast on your favorite podcast app. Okay, on to our second question. You get to have one beer with any current living musician of your choice. Who you picking? All right. I love this question from Sadie, my friend, as well as co-host of the Meathead Test Kitchen podcast, which is also on the Herd at Media Network of podcasts. Go check them out. Sadie and Sasha make a great podcast, but I just love this question. Sadie, I want to know your answer to this too, but I will give you mine first. I'd actually love to hear from anybody, so hit me on Twitter and let's talk about this. But my answer, my answer is Dave Grohl. So why? I feel like this is sort of an obvious answer because he's such a famous musician. But my thing is that he's just been a huge part of rock and roll and the music industry at large since the early 90s. Before we knew him as the drummer in Nirvana, he was in the punk rock band Scream. Of course, Nirvana. Big thing. Um, he was interested instrumental in their ascendancy to be the most popular rock band in the world and then after nirvana he started this new project foo fighters and that ended up becoming the biggest rock band in the world and then you know there's all kinds of the different projects right now they have <laughs> their uh, horror movie that's out but you know they did stuff like the studio city project and as part of that he played with just about every famous musician ever so he's connected he's got stories he's done so much stuff i mean he's really is instrumental in basically like 
three or four different movements <laughs> of rock and roll. And uh, he knows everybody. He knows everything. He's, you know, Dave Grohl is also a musician's musician. So he's able to not only write and record era defining music, but also sit and play with artists of the same caliber when he's not doing projects. When he's not doing something with the Foo Fighters, he also just likes to play the drums. So like <laughs> he's on Rolling Stones list of the top drummers of all time. He's been in, to the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. And, you know, he sits in with all kinds of bands. He apparently has secretly uh, toured with bands like Ghost. He has been the drummer on all kinds of bands stuff. He's also uh, like, you know, example, he's the drummer for Tenacious D. He's never toured with them, but he does it on all the records and stuff because he just likes to do that type of thing. And he's a great drummer. Not only is he a great singer and songwriter and guitar player, he's also a great drummer. Like the dude can do everything. Best of all to me though, like why I want to sit down with him and have a beer. He's just a really down to earth guy. He likes to talk about anything and everything. He's nice. And, you know, sitting at the end of the bar, having a glass of beer and bullshitting with Dave Grohl just sounds like a really good time. I bet he's got a million stories. I also bet he'd be good at listening to <laughs> maybe this is me projecting, but I like to think he'd be a good friend. Um, you know, that said, I, I don't usually get nervous around famous people, but I might have a little bit of trouble finding the right words if Dave Grohl asked me to pull up the stool. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for your questions. Remember, you can submit your own question to be featured on a future podcast at popsandhisses.com slash question. I'm your host, Kevin Coffey, and you can follow me on Twitter as at Omaha Music Guy or find my page on Facebook by searching for my name, Kevin Coffey. Thank you so much, as always, to Herd at Media for producing the show and find lots more of our podcasts on herdatmedia.com slash network. That's H-U-R-R-D-A-T media.com. Thanks for listening. See you next time. A Huda Media Production.